Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coffee Break, and welcome back to the Coffee Cast Procast Edition, where I am going to be coming back with game number two in this best of five series. Spawning on the lower left hand side here on Cloud Kingdom, he is going to be the hands down victor of the first game, even using, I would like to point out, proper capitalization of his opponent's name. It is going to be EG's Stefano. And on the top right hand side, he, well, tried a little bit of a Stargate play in the first game. It didn't quite work out for him. It is going to be a Liquid Hero. That Stargate play, I liked the idea of it. Um, I don't know if I necessarily liked the addition of the Void Rays at the time that he did add the Void Rays in. And I, I, I will say that because I personally believe the Void Rays are a great late game unit. They are a great late game unit. Just adding, you know, three, four, or five in your late game army is a beautiful way to add a nice amount of DPS back into your army. And I just realized I promised to try lower graphic settings for this game at the end of last game. So I will do that now. I hope you guys don't mind, uh, you know, a little bit of, um, I don't know, lower, lower setting graphics. We'll find out what happens here. Uh, I, I do like the Void Rays in the late game. But I think that adding them in as kind of an awkward mid-game unit, not really the best choice. They, they, they just kind of, they're, they're not very maneuverable, I guess is what I'm going for. And they die to a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, if mutilists come out on the field, they're dead. And if mutilists are on the field, that means corruptors can come on the field, they're dead. Um, if the Zerg player randomly goes Hydralisks for whatever reason, not that, you know, you'd ever really see a Hydralisk on the field for any reason, but if the Zerg player does randomly decide to go Hydralisk, Void Rays are dead. Um, if, if the Zerg player decides to have an extra cream, queen for creep spreading, Void Rays are dead. I mean, I mean, literally, they are just like the most fragile unit, and you really need that ground-based army to help back them up. That being said, late game, I think they're a good unit, just just not a very good mid game unit especially in pvz i haven't really seen them experimented with in pvp pvt they just suck they just always suck there not taking anything away from stefano though he played a pretty good game he did get a little bit of harassment over at his third his mining i, I actually went back and uh, watched the replay just a little bit more i did kind of miss a little bit of the earlier aggression the mining was delayed for quite some time at that third base and stefano really wasn't all that phased by it in the last game, also, I was talking a little bit about the Gateway Expand. Once again, Cloud Kingdom, not really the map for it. It's one of the uh, one of the smaller maps, I would say. I mean, it's not. no maps are really all that small anymore. But uh, one of the smaller maps is definitely this. Is, oh, Pro just barely surviving with the Zergling. Going to be able to get up into the main base to get a scout off. And what's he going to see? Well, pretty much nothing. Gas is just going down at, you know, pretty normal time here. And at this point in time, there's really nothing to see. I mean, the, the only thing you'd really be able to see coming up in here is any sort of random cheese play, which I can't really think of any cheese play that works off of a, a fast nexus. So, you know, Zergling up there just really going to be kind of annoying. Might be able to get a probe kill here or there if hero, you know, just kind of stops paying attention, which really doesn't happen all that often. So, you know, standard schmander stuff here. Third base going down just a little bit later than normal. Maybe that's uh, it's about a 4:30. I mean, Stefano, you'll see a lot of time. We'll be going for those 4 to 4:15 hatcheries, just because. Well, pretty much he can get away with it because he can somehow make like four zerglings kill off a thousand zealots. I'm pretty certain here. It looks like Hero is going to be trying to do a little bit of cannoning. Did I see some red clicking there though? I thought I saw some red clicking from Stefano to uh, to indicate that he saw that, but I apparently not. Looking over at Stefano's cam, he actually cannot see this pylon hidden right here. That zergling apparently was. Whoop! There we go. That zergling apparently was still in the main base. Was able to do you know maybe some last second scouting, but once again, not really anything sitting up in the main there. Cannons are coming down for a liquid here. Can Stefano see that yet? No, he cannot. So this is really just beautiful positioning by EG, uh, pardon me, by liquid hero here. Still cannot see that. Those cannons are actually going to be able to finish up there. A third cannon going down and blocking off this pylon. Once again, hero, beautiful positioning. This will not be sounded until literally the last second. There it goes. 
and now he knows everything that's going on as the hatchery finishes up. These cannons are going to finish up and be able to start pounding away at the hatchery. Nothing's really going to be able to get back at that pylon for any uh, any amount of time here. This hatchery actually probably going to go down here. I don't really think that there's anything Stefano can do to, to save this hatchery at this point in time. That third cannon even going to finish there just to ensure a hero's to victory. He probably could have canceled that and have been just fine. And I just realized... One thing that has been driving me nuts, and I have to finish it now. There we go. There we go. I did. I had it on targeted rather than selected. So, yeah, that's going to be a setback for Stefano. There's no denying that. Now the third base going to be about three minutes delayed from what we normally see out of Stefano. And in this case, um, I once again do not like the Stargate play. After forcing the cancel on, the th at, on that third base, I really would have liked Hero to, uh, to either maybe have done... The, the Zealot Sentry Immortal all in because he's so far ahead at this point. Stefano's macro is going to be very far behind. His tech is going to be far behind. His units, uh, pardon me, his unit producing is going to be far behind. So I think that the, the all in at this point would have been very powerful. Or uh, added on a couple extra gateways, added on the robo, still do that kind of like that very, very standard four gate robo play and take it at third base of his own. Uh, Stargate play, I think, is going to be a little bit iffy. A little bit iffy. Because now we have the evolution chambers. Those aren't going to be delayed at all. Spore Crawler is going to be able to come down at a perfectly normal time still. Just in time to be able to defend against the Stargate play. I mean, we'll see what he can do with it. Zealot is going to be taken out at the Watchtower. Did have nice positioning there. But nice positioning will only get you so far when you are outnumbered at like, what? 8 to 1, 6 to 1. Something that wasn't good odds for that poor little Zealot there. Harvest of Tab shows both players fairly even at this point in time. No player really taking advantage as of yet. I mean... Technically, Stefano does have a three lead, but at this point in time, as a jerk play, you really want to be much further ahead than that. That third base getting sniped, once again, a pretty darn big deal. Not even getting a queen very quickly. Oh, never mind. Never mind. There's the queen coming in to that hatchery there. Creep spread as impeccable as ever from EG Stefano, though. Already pushing that out to take over at his third base there, just to be able to reinforce that very, very quickly. Plus one weapons is coming on the way for Liquid Hero. I've been surprised that he's been delaying it this long, actually. I suppose if you're not going for any sort of timing attack, it's not the greatest deal in the world. But I always prefer personally getting that plus one weapons just a little bit earlier on. Just in case the Zerg opponent is going for any sort of uh, Zergling counterattack. Especially, I guess, if you're going for a quick third base, you really need that. Just be able to kill off the Zerglings just a little bit faster if they do start getting around that Nexus. But I guess that's not, once again, that big of a deal. Robotics now on the field. Additional gateways going down. And Hero is pushing out with his Phoenixes coming over to the third base infestation pit. About halfway done, but not quite there. There is the Spore Crawler going down. This Queen probably is going to be forfeit there. As we do have that nice money number of Phoenixes. That Queen is, in fact, going to die. And there we go. There we go. I was almost worried he might microwave for a second there. A few drones going to get picked off as well. Not going to be able to run over here. Probably be, be able to start picking away at Overlord. It's actually going to be going for the Queen over here as well. Looks like the Spore Caller was a little bit delayed there. So here is did manage to find a nice little timing here where those Spore Crawlers were not quite finished here. Able to do actually quite a bit of damage. I mean, picking off two Queens and a couple of Overlords is a pretty freaking big deal. Zergen is going to be trying to come over here and take out these cannons. Oh, but Zell is being warped in at a crucial point in time. Those uh, cannons are going to go down, but now we have the pylon over here to warp in additional units. We have the Phoenixes over here, and that's going to force a big reaction now, Stefano. 20 Zerglings on the way, and guess what? 20 Zerglings it means that 10 drones are not being spawned out. I know that's kind of a duh factor, but you kind of have to take that into account that those larvae are not being used to produce the economy, and instead are being used to produce the attacking units, which, uh, all in all, Hero is in a decent position to defend against. I mean, he has the gateway count on the field and that plus one upgrade as well, which is just so, so good against the Zerglings. All he's really missing now is the, uh, the plus one armor upgrade, and he'll pretty much be set to defend against any sort of Zergling counterattack. Phoenixes, by the way, all are still alive. I don't think he lost a single one there. Colossus production coming out of the field now. We do have the third base going down maybe a little bit later than I personally would have liked, but not that bad of a timing. There are some Zerglings streaming out across the map here. Just needs to make sure to get some nice force shields down coming in from two different angles. Oh, actually, these units might get surrounded. He's back up against this wall. Beautiful force shields there. And now warping in additional zealots to help save all, save this third base here. Zerglings are in a nice little surround position around the Nexus. Oh, needs to get more force shields around 
on that Nexus to be able to save it. If that Nexus goes down, Hero actually is not going to be in a very good position at all. Does manage to save it last second, though, with only 250 health left on that. Plenty of force fields left on those sentries to be able to force field around this Nexus should those Zerglings come back in for a counter attack. Phoenix is finally going to be able to pick up this Overlord, which was in a fairly nice position there. To, uh, to get a little bit of scouting done. But that was a nice save by Hero. This means that he is in a very, very solid position, kind of transitioning from this mid game and going into the late game, where really he can start getting his additional tier three tech down. You really don't want to go into the late game with just, um, just you know, just your gateway and Colossus army. You kind of want that uh, that additional tier three tech or, or, or heavy upgrades. You need to get blink and charge Plus three, uh, plus three ground weapons. You need to get double forge going. But uh, I mean, a lot of players prefer to kind of, you know, maybe skip one or two of those upgrades and instead get the get the fleet beacon down, get the mothership out on the field, get the archons out on the field. That's all what you can do on three bases. Mothership. Uh, well, I mean, I guess this is really the time you want to start laying down that fleet beacon. You do not want to wait till that 16 minute mark until you lay down that fleet beacon because you need to start getting the mothership out and getting a chrono boost and getting the energy going so that when the Broodlords do eventually pop on the field and they will be coming at some point in time, you will be ready for them. Zerg is going to be trying to come up to this Nexus, but a nice a little SimCity build coming on here from Liquid Hero. Going to be able to create a very small engagement angle for those Zerglings. And they're pretty much going to be forced back. There's not really a great engagement angle for Stefano to hit at. Stefano only now at the 14 minute mark laying down that third, pardon me, that fourth hatchery there. So his macro alone is going to be very, very far behind. Even moving a spore crawler or two up into the middle of the map. Not quite sure about the uh, the decision making process there. Maybe just trying to get a little bit of, bit of map control in the middle of the map there. Uh, maybe, maybe hoping to intercept a couple of phoenixes, not allow observers to fly by as well. That's kind of interesting position there. Phoenixes are going to pick up the Zerglings over at the Watchtower here, not going to be wasting any sort of unnecessarily zealots over there. Actually, it does sound like one zealot did die, couldn't see him in there. But going to be regaining a little bit of map control with those phoenixes, and that's what you really want to do with those phoenixes. Just control at least some part of the map, flying around, scouting for additional bases. He's probably going to come upon this fourth base fairly shortly here. Corruptors are coming out of the map. No hive as of yet. No, no hive. So just sticking on this tier 2 tech, interestingly enough, I think Stefan well, I, I mean, I guess his, his economy is kind of far behind compared to where he wants to be. I mean, you really want another 15 drones here. Not out of the game, but I think Stefano does have an uphill battle at this point in time. Phoenix is just going to kind of sit under this poor collar for a bit of time. As there is an engagement in the middle of the map here, it looks like Hero wants to break this contain. As he's taking his fourth base, those offensive terrors are going down, but plenty of Colossus and Argons in the middle there. These Corruptors are going to be able to take down the, the Colossus, but the Archons, once again, going to be very problematic for Stefano. He really doesn't have anything to be able to counter those all that well, but Hero just doesn't have that big of a ground army. He doesn't have a big beefy ground army to be able to counter all the roaches that are on the field right now. And that is going to force him to need to fall back here. Hero, you cannot really continue to engage this. Is having a few more units trying to come up and reinforce this. But once again, just the roach count there, just a little bit too high. Paired with a couple of extra investors, he's going to need to cancel this fourth base. I just do not think that he has enough to really be able to pull out against this. Trying to warp in a lot of additional zealots here. I think he needs a couple of extra stocks in there. Oh no, never mind. He does have charge there. One uh, investor is being lifted up. This is something that he needed to do in the previous game, but just not that many phoenixes left over here. Too many infested Terrans down on the ground, and this fourth base is going to be forfeited as there's nothing left for here to defend with. And with that engagement, Hero, draw, Hero lost a lot of his ground army, which means Stefano is in a great position for another attack. You're pushing up into the third base, probably going to be able to snipe this Nexus, which is already so low on health from the Zirkling attack earlier on in the game. And without that third base, Hero is going to be looking to be in a very, very bad economic position. We look over that that income tab that's going to be dropping very rapidly. Even though the probe count is in the Hero's favor, he just does not have the base to be able to support that. Roaches are going to eventually die here to the charged lots and the stock here, but I don't really think Stefano is too terribly worried about that. Getting the plus one flyer attacks even at this point in time, because why not? I don't really see... Oh, never mind, never mind. The Hive is coming down on the field, so that will help the Broodlords. I think Hero's best option here... Oh, 
what is Hero's best option? I don't really know. I mean, obviously, he really needs to reestablish this third base. At this point in time, he really needs to find some way to get a fourth base up and running as well, as he just has a great probe count. But with this army of Stefano on the field, yeah, it's not a huge, you know, massive, maxed out, scary Zerg army that we're so used to seeing at this point in the game. But there's just a, so much more than what Hero has. And now with Broodlords coming onto the field, probably within the next two minutes here. In fact, there goes the Barrier of Spire as I say that. Uh, Hero really is not going to have the economy to be able to battle off such an army like that, I, I guess. I mean, especially without the mothership. We don't even have a fleet beacon on the field last I checked. Looking around here, no, no fleet beacon. Blink only now being researched. So that's coming a little bit late. I do like the pylon on the southern side of the map to be able to do some sort of counterattack. Zealots are coming into the natural expansion here. Uh, pardon me, the third base, fourth base, whatever, whatever base number this is. But they aren't really going to be able to do all that much damage. Adre Adrenal Glens coming on the way for Stefano, plus three ground weapons, or uh, I should say plus three melee attack for Stefano as well. He's just sitting in such a great position here. If we look over at Heroes out of Things, does have that plus three weapons but does not have the, the armor of upgrades that you really want against a lot of Zerglings, and especially when Broodlings start coming onto the map, that armor upgrade is very pivotal. Maybe even might want to consider shield upgrades instead, considering that he does have these Archons on the field. Zerglings just going to start getting sacked now, running up into the third base of Hero. Going to be able to get a little bit of scouting off, but that's really all these are going to be used for, is getting some scouting done. As at this point, Stefano just kind of wants his supply freed up. I'm surprised Stefano actually is not taking a fifth base. Once again, he, he, his base timings have been very, very slow this game. I guess he's feeling confident enough uh, to the point where he doesn't feel like he needs those additional bases. But considering the fact that he does have a few extra resources banked up, you almost may as well throw down that additional hatch. We do have a lot of zealots coming down into the fourth base here. It looks like this fourth base might actually fall here. Zealots are going to be able to take out that hatchery. Zergling and Roach is coming to by just too late to be able to reinforce that, and that is exactly what Hero needed to do. Those units being warped in at the pylon down at the bottom right here. So that is exactly what Liquid Hero needed to be able to come back into this game, just stall his opponent just a little bit in the meantime. Pushing out across the north side of the map here, might be trying to find a few units off guard here, clean up at least a little bit of this creep. This is starting to get to be a little bit of a scary army for Liquid Hero. Stefano really needs to find something to do against this, but the positioning really not in Stefano's favor right now. In fact, really not in either player's favor. Stefano was forced to throw down a, th a few infested Terrans. Liquid Hero just going to be pulling back around the north side of the map. Now, we have to remember this pylon is still down here at the bottom side of the map, going to be able to warp in additional reinforcements to be able to uh, continue harassing at that fourth base. Stefano's army still kind of out of position for that. Looks like he is going to be trying to take a fifth base, but once again, with that pylon there, Stefano is going to be forced to fall back home and defend as he just literally has nothing down here to defend and that means that his slower broodlords and his slower infestors are going to be caught out in the middle of the map St hero not going to be able to take advantage of that really not feeling confident enough I, I think to be able to push out in the middle of the map as even if he was able to jump up there and try to snipe off a broodlord or two the zergling to roach would just be able to reinforce so quickly that it would kind of be a vain effort I think that would kind of be the end of hero's army is getting storm I love that decision have the high, has the High Templars already warped in there, now ready to push out, just about maxed out. No Mothership still though, I'd love to note that, but there are only 5 Broodlords on the field, so if there's anything going in Hero's favor, it's the fact that there are only 5 Broodlords, not that massive number. In fact, once again, still no Fleet Beacon, no Mothership in sight. I do think that's a maybe a little bit interesting play calling there. Now, I would like to point out, while we have a little bit of lull, this is where I love maybe it's like three or four Void Rays to go in the army as well. It just makes a beautifully well-rounded composition. Nobody does it, and I think that that's really, really odd. Stefano is continuing to block the fourth base down here, but I, th I don't think that's that big of a deal for Hero as this is kind of the natural expansion path that we're seeing here coming from the third base, moving over towards this, uh, this top side base. As you can just kind of position your army out in the middle of the map right here, and you defend both your fourth base and your third base, and you're really not all that far away from your natural expansion as well. Looks like Hero is going to be pushing into the third base of EG Stefano. It looks like this is going to be the big engagement, blinking underneath those Broodlords. Great storms going off on top of uh, Stefano's army, and I think that's actually going to be just enough for Hero here, who is losing quite a few stalkers, but the Broodlords falling so quickly, only one Broodlord remaining, and a, and a nice little handful of Infestors. 
uh, Hero's army did melt away quite quickly there. Looks like we do have Zergling trying to do a little bit of damage up in the third base here. Not really doing a ton of broke kills, but is laying a little bit of mining there. Stefano kind of in a bad position here. Losing a lot of his Broodlords. If Hero can manage to pick off this third base, he will be in a great position there. Zergling still just kind of, uh, still just kind of chilling out up here. But I don't think Hero's going to be able to muster up enough forces as he lost quite a bit of mining there. It's just so abysmally low on that mineral account. If we look over at this tab, it looks like a lot of harvesters actually have gone down. Zerglings, who with the adrenal glands and the 3 3 upgrades, I can't even select them, they're moving so fast, have just been able to absolutely decimate this mineral land. Now we're seeing 54 55 workers healed before Hero finally realizes, oh crap, I need to pull my army back. And now that he's pulled his army back, this leaves this fourth base exposed, and Stefano's going to be trying to maybe push it. Okay, just just four roaches going to be coming over here, trying to pick up a few more probes. And I guess that's really all he needs to do is kill a few probes here, kill a few probes there, and he will be in a decent position. I'm surprised Hero not trying to warp in down here once again, just you know, sending three or four zealots. I guess once again, his uh, his mineral count so low is going to be able to be in a perfect position to warp in High Templar though, as he has a nice little bit of gas banked up. Stefano not really doing all that well on his mineral count either. Not to say that their macro is bad. Well, you know, Hero might maybe in a bad spot. Stefano is just spending his resources so efficiently, getting a nice ball of Zerglings and Broodlords and Festers all back on the map, dropping a storm on top of those Broodlords. Maybe not the best. Use of the energy there is going to be able to do a little bit of extra energy. Looks like this might be our final big engagement here. Really should be dropping those storms on top of those infested Terrans instead. Blinking underneath the Broodlords. Just not enough stalkers on the field right now. Most of the Broodlords are going to die, but I think two are going to remain here. And unless these Archons can pull off some miracle jump forward, even Transfusion going down on top of these Broodlords broodlords to keep them alive and then a neural parasite on the archon actually one last archon oh he is going to live that actually is kind of a big deal that, that archon does live because that is three other gas right there that almost got taken out i don't know how stefano uh pardon me how a hero exactly can come back into this game as his macro i mean he's just now getting his mineral count going back up in that income tab there and I, I really think that's kind of a testament to this game is Stefano's ability to be able to pick off the harvesters when it mattered the most. And I mean, at one point, Hero was up 75 to 60 harvesters. He, that's just how many he has lost at this point in time. Flyer attacks level 3 coming down on the field now as well. It's going to make these Broodlords just so, so powerful. Hero still trying to push up a little bit. Is forcing quite a bit of energy off of these Infestors. In fact, the Infestors are getting very low on energy. I only saw one or two in there maybe. Um... Yeah, maybe two or three left that really have a decent amount of energy left on them. Which means that as long as he can continue forcing this many infested Terrans going down, he might have a chance in just a little bit to make some sort of engagement happen here. He needs to keep this High Templar alive as it does have a little bit of storm. There are High uh, Infested Terrans coming into the fourth base mineral line as well as the third base mineral line. That Infested Terran doing, pardon me, that one Infester doing so much damage as once again that is not something a Liquid Hero can afford to lose right now is those Harvesters. 69 Harvesters now lost. Hero really just needs to try to make something happen. 16 to 53 Harvesters. Hero trying to push forward here. A nice one growth does go down on top of the Colossus and the stocks to prevent them from doing any sort of positioning maneuver. Trying to fall back. So many Brutalists now back on the field. I just don't think Hero is going to have anything that can really counter this number of the Broodlords, especially with Transfuses down on the ground below. There's a GG from Hero. Stefano going to be moving on to a game number three in this best of five series. Is Hero going to be able to pull out another game, put up a great fight in game number two? In fact, it looked to be in a very good position for a little bit there. I think his biggest mistake, not getting the mothership. Really, really needed to get that mothership. Just, I mean, take a... Even if you can only take, like... like Five Broodlords. I mean, I, I will say Stefano did have a nice little line of Broodlords rather than having them clumped up. Even if you can just take five Broodlords out of the fight, it can be such, such a game changer. I am going to go ahead and sign off for the night. I will finish casting either tomorrow or Thursday. I'll finish casting the series tomorrow or Thursday. But for now, I want to get some sleep and rest my voice up because I have a long week of singing ahead of me. Oh, God. Gosh, finals coming up, and for a vocal performance manager, that means pretty much singing like four or five hours every day. So, do need to preserve my voice a little bit. This is Coffee Break.